Hey guys, it's Tanya Mitchell from Trio Student Support Services. And as you all know, if you've been watching my videos, I am an academic mentor and a tutor here in Trio Student Support Services. And so today's video is going to cover chapter six for intro chem. And this is chemical composition. And so what we need to understand from chemical composition is that we, um, we need to be able to determine the relationship of the masses of elements in a chemical compound. And being able, be, looking at a chemical compound um, does not help us establish those relationships, right? We have to introduce a new concept to you, and it's the mole, okay? So let me back up just a minute and let's talk about um, relating numbers to mass, okay? So um, let's say you go to the hardware store and you ask for a pound of, of nails, okay? So one pound of nails because you're working on a home improvement project. Um, so you just go and ask for one pound of nails. Well, we really don't have any way of knowing how exactly how many nails are in a pound of nails just based on the mass alone. So we need in the scientific community needs a way to relate mass with the number, okay? So the number of nails to the mass of those nails. So the number to the weight, okay? And so we are able to do that with atoms and molecules by using what we call the mole, okay? And so the mole is a unit of measurement um, that can be anything, okay? So uh, when you look at your quantitative relationships, you can look at uh, one pair of socks. So one pair of socks is what? Two socks, okay? Uh, you've got uh, one dozen donuts is equivalent to what? 12 donuts, right? So then we have um, one ream of paper is equal to 500 sheets of paper. And then we have the mole, okay? So one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is also known as Avogadro's number. So one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is the same as Avogadro's number. So when you go into your intro chem class, and your professor starts talking about moles and Avogadro's number, you're one step ahead of them. You, you've got an idea of what this is um, because this is something we're going to be referring to from here on out, for, from now to the end of the semester, okay? So you definitely need to know this, guys. Learn it, live it, love it, okay? Avogadro's number. It's a, it's a pretty large number. So to put it into perspective, if you were to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd um, in dollars, okay, that would pay the Earth's population $3 million per second for 100 years, okay? So if we were to pay the entire population on planet Earth 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd dollars, would be a lot of rich people, okay? Um, if we had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd marbles, just marbles, it would cover the earth, earth, the surface of the earth 50 miles deep, okay? So it's a very large number, okay? Just to give you some perspective into 
what this number is. It's a very big number, okay? And it's kind of like a gatekeeper. So we use moles, uh, we use moles for as a gatekeeper when we're working on conversions. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but I wanted to introduce to the concept to you, identify it or define it for you, and then we'll get into converting. So uh, once again, we're going to be putting our dimensional analysis skills to, to, to work. Um, this, is, this is why I wanted you guys to practice those conversion problems, those conversion factors early in the semester because we're going to be applying them to more Hmm, more difficult concepts um, and so if you don't understand how to do it you're going to struggle okay so this would be the time to stop the video and refer back to one of the earlier videos grab your homework get those conversion problems done because if you don't understand it then that then none of this is going to make any sense to you okay so this will be a good time for you to stop the video review your notes from chapter two chapter three uh, review the video the youtube video for chapter two uh, get a good understanding of those conversions and then you can continue on this video okay so we're going to take a look at um the si si unit for an amount okay when we are working with units uh, conversions or otherwise we always want to identify always want to identify what the unit is that we're working with okay so um, the SI abbreviation for moles is MOL okay it's not much of a it's not much of an abbreviation when you consider it's only a four-letter word okay so you can look at it like this. So one mole of atoms is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, right? So we've already established this relationship. This is the same thing. So you can make one mole of anything. Okay. okay, so we have two different conversion factors that we can use when we are going from moles to number of atoms. Okay, so the one, one conversion factor is one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over one mole. Okay, so it's just like when we did the unit conversions previously in chapter 2, mole conversions are not that much different but you still need to understand how to do it in order to be able to answer the questions on your quizzes and exams so let's work through an example together here um, we're going to convert um, moles to atoms moles to number of atoms so let me just throw something up here real quick all right so we want to convert we have a silver ring that contains 1.1 times 10 to the 22nd silver atoms We want to know how many moles this is equivalent to, right? So how many moles of silver are in this ring? So we, once again, go back to our solution map, which takes us from atoms to moles, right? We're going to use our conversion factor, which is one mole. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms we're going to fill in the rest of our information so we have 1.1 times 10 to the 22nd we're going to multiply that oh that's silver atoms so ag atoms so one thing to remember is when 
you are working from left to right with your conversion factors. If you will put your originating number over one, then you can make sure you end up with the correct unit in your answer by canceling out your luck items. So if you start with atoms here, then you need to have atoms on the bottom of your conversion factor. So we're going from atoms to atoms. Those are like units, so we're going to cross those out, and our answer will end up in moles, right? So when we multiply, we're going to multiply across, and then we're going to divide. So when you put this into your calculator, this is what it's going to look like. So you always want to use parentheses, okay? When you're using a number in scientific notation. Okay? Parentheses, then you're going to multiply by one. And you can put that parentheses or not, it doesn't matter there. <clears throat> and then you're going to divide parentheses by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then you're gonna hit enter, right? So this is how you would put it into your calculator. When you hit enter, the answer that you get should be 0 0.018 times 10 to the negative two moles of silver. Okay, so that's not that difficult. You just have to make sure and be very careful when you're putting these figures into your calculator that you're doing it correctly. It's so easy to get tripped up, make a mistake, and come up with the wrong answer. And so you want to be able to, you want to make sure that you take your time when you're answering these questions because they involve a lot of numbers, a lot of calculations. So take your time when you're doing this, okay? Let's work another example problem and then we'll move on to our next subject, our next topic. So we wanna know how many atoms, so we wanna find the number of atoms In a gold ring, 8.83. Okay, so we have a gold ring that contain that we have a ring that contains 8.83 times 10 to the second moles of gold. We want to convert that from moles to atoms. So we're going to do the same thing we just did. We're just going to reverse our conversion factor. So uh, once again, we start with our solution map. We're going to go from moles to atoms. Our conversion factor going to have our moles on the bottom and Avogadro's number on the top. And that way we can make sure that our answer ends up in atoms. Okay, so we're going to cancel out our like units. That way we know that our answer will end up in atoms. Put this into the calculator, and the answer that we get is 5.32 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of gold. Okay? Pretty easy. All right, so let's take a look and see what steps we need to use or take in order to convert from grams to moles, okay? So we wanna convert from grams to the number of moles of an element. 
So we're going to take a look at that next. Okay, so when we convert between grams and moles of an element, we use the molar mass of that element. So we can use the molar mass, which is the mass of one mole of atoms of an element, okay? And so we use this as a conversion factor. Um, when we did our video for chapter five, we learned about formula mass. So formula mass was the total weight of all compound of all elements in that compound okay it's the same thing as molar mass so the molar mass is the mass of one mole of atoms of any particular element so we're going to take carbon as an example so we know that the atomic weight of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole okay so, I'm going to do it like this. 12.01 grams of carbon is equal to one mole of carbon. So we can actually use this as a conversion factor if we wanted to calculate the number of moles of carbon in a um, 0.58 gram diamond so that would be pure carbon so our diamond is 0 0.58 and we want to find out how many moles of carbon that is equivalent to so we're going to take our 0 0.58 gram diamond which is carbon so we're just going to change this to carbon and we're going to multiply it by our conversion factor which our mole goes on top because that's the answer that we want to end with. Okay, so now we are just going to cancel out our like terms. We're going to divide our 0 0.58 by the 12.01 and it's going to give us an answer of 4.8 times 10 to the 26. Oh, negative two moles of carbon. So everything that we've learned up to this point makes sense, yes? We have taken concepts that we've learned in chapter two and applied it to concepts that we've learned in chapter five to bring us here to chapter six, okay? So um, let's work a couple more of these example problems uh, converting from grams to moles and then we'll move on to our next topic. Okay, so we're going to do one more part of this problem and then I'll put some on the board that you can work independently. So we have a sample of sulfur and the weight of that sulfur is 57.8 grams and we want to find out how many moles of sulfur this is equal to, right? So we take our, our given information is our 57.8 grams of sulfur and we want to calculate or find the number of moles, right? So we need to determine what our conversion factor is. Well, when we look at our periodic table, we see that the molar mass of sulfur, so the molar mass of sulfur is 32.06 grams okay so this molar mass just became our conversion factor so we have our solution map we're going to go from grams to moles we know that one mole of sulfur is equivalent to 32.06 grams of sulfur so this is our conversion factor. We take our given information, which is 57.8 grams of sulfur. We're going to cancel our like units. Do the math. The answer that we get is 1.80 moles of sulfur, right? So not too terribly difficult. Um, 
just based on all of the concepts that we've learned up to this point. Pretty easy stuff. Periodic table gives you your molar mass um, calculator. So the next thing that we're going to look at after we look at these practice problems on our own um, is going to be calculating from grams of an element and number of L and number of atoms. Okay. So um, the practice problems your professor has listed or posted in the unit homework. I'll go ahead and put some of those on the whiteboard that you can work independently um, just for the practice based on the examples that we've worked so far. Okay, so we've got two practice problems. They're each two part uh, practice problems on the board here that you can pause the video and work uh, independently. Um, your professor, I believe, posts the answers to each individual homework. So we won't, um, we won't work these out together. You'll be able to work them out individually uh, based on everything that we've covered in the tutorials up until this point. So go ahead and um, write these down or look at your homework sheet, pause the video and work through them. And then when we come back together, we're going to, um, we're going to be converting from grams of an element to number of atoms, okay? So one thing about converting from grams to the number of atoms is we can't go, it's just like when we did our additional uni unit conversions in chapter two, we can't always go from one unit directly to the next. We have to have a gatekeeper. And in this instance, when we go from grams to atoms or atoms to grams, moles is the gatekeeper, okay? So he's the intermediary. He's, he's the one in the middle that we have to go through in order to find our answer on either side. Okay, so that's the next thing that we're going to talk about. Okay, so we have this problem on the board where we are asked to find the number of carbon atoms in a 0.58 gram diamond. So it's pure carbon. So I just identified it here as carbon. So our first step is to convert from grams to moles. Okay, so we're going to take the 0.58 grams and we're going to convert it into a number of moles. So then our second step is to convert those moles into number of atoms. So we can't, like I said, we can't go directly from atoms to grams or grams to atoms. We have to go through the gatekeeper, which is moles, okay? So the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams. And if we were to draw our solution map, so our solution map is going to look like this. So we're going to go from grams, right? So here's our grams. Then we're going to go to moles. And then we're going to arrive at our answer, which is going to be atoms. And our conversion factors so we're going from grams to moles so we have to have the molar mass the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams so we know for every one mole of carbon is equivalent to 12.01 grams of carbon and now we're going to go from moles to atoms and we know for every one mole of carbon is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And so we'll put that conversion factor up here. Okay. And as we are multiplying across, we're going to mark out our like units. And that way we know that our answer will be in the correct number in the correct unit, right? So we take our 0 0.58 grams of carbon. We're going to cancel out our like units here. 
moles of carbon and moles of carbon are going to cancel each other out. When we multiply and then divide, the answer that we come up with is 2.9. times 10 to the 22nd carbon atoms. Okay? So it's not that different than what we've been doing so far. We're just adding an extra step. Okay? So these are all concepts that we already know. We're just putting an extra step in the middle to get our answer. So it's not hard, guys. Let's not, let's not make it hard. Let's make it easy. So, that's the answer for that practice problem. Let's see if we can do another one. Well, let's look at this example here. So, it says, how many aluminum atoms are in an aluminum can with a mass of 16.2 grams? So, let's take a look at what the information that we are provided in this, in this problem. All right, so we're asked to find the number of aluminum atoms. So let's just underline aluminum atoms. And we have an aluminum can that has a mass of 16.2 grams. So what we're doing here, once again, is we're going from grams of an element to atoms of an element, okay? So that's our given information. And we'll just draw it out here on the board. So we're given 16.2 grams of aluminum. Okay, and we are asked to find atoms of aluminum. So we need to look at our relationships. So if we grab the periodic table we need to find the molar mass for our aluminum which okay so molar mass for aluminum is equal to 26.98 so we need this information because it is our conversion factor one of our conversion factors okay so drawing our solution map, we know that we're going to go from, let's do this in a different color. Okay, so we're going to go from grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum to atoms of aluminum. Okay. We have everything that we need in order to calculate and find the correct answer. So let's just take a look at our conversion factors. We have one mole of aluminum is equal to 26.98 grams of aluminum. And then um, one mole of aluminum is also equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. Okay, so when we plug in our mass that we were given in the initial problem, 16.2 grams of aluminum, and we multiply across, uh, we're first going to take the step, an additional step, and mark out our like units. And that way we know that our answer is going to be in the correct unit. So atoms of aluminum. So when we take our 16.2, we divide by 26.98, and then we multiply by Avogadro's number. The answer that we get is 3.62 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. Okay, 
So the next thing that we're going to talk about is converting from between grams of an element and moles of a compound. So when you are converting between grams and moles of a compound, you have to take into account the um, formula weight or the molar mass of that particular compound. Okay, so with this problem, we are being asked to find the number of moles in a 22.5 gram sample of dry ice. And dry ice is just solid CO2. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the molar mass for CO2. Okay, so um, we'll do that. Uh, molar mass of CO2. So we have one molecule or atom of carbon and the weight of carbon is 12.01 and we're going to add that to 2 times 16 which is the molar mass of oxygen okay so we have 12.01 plus 32 equals 44.01 all right, so we have our conversion factor. So we know that one mole of CO2 is equivalent to 44.01 grams of CO2, right? So we can just erase all the rest of this. So I'm looking for the number of moles. All right, so using my conversion factor, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my problem with my solution map. So I'm going to go from grams to moles. I don't have any additional steps. Um, so this is going to be a pretty simple calculation. I've already figured out my conversion factor here. So I have one mole CO2 is equivalent to 44.01 grams of CO2, right? So now we just plug in the rest of our information. 22.5 grams of CO2. We multiply that across. Actually, we're going to be dividing. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.51 moles of CO2. Okay? Easy. Instead of calculating the molar mass of a single element, we were calculating the mass of a compound. Okay? And that's how we came up with our answer here. Okay, so the next concept that we're going to talk about is converting between grams of a compound and number of molecules. So um, this is the same as number of atoms. It's the same concept, just different, just different vocabulary. And we're going to continue with the um, sample of dry ice, the CO2. So we have our given information, which is um, we have a 22.5 gram sample of CO2 and we want to find out we, we want to know how many molecules are in this sample how many molecules of CO2 are in this sample right and so based on everything that we've learned this far let's put it all together and apply it to this problem okay so we're going to go ahead and we know what our molar mass is for this particular element. The molar mass for um, CO2 is 44.01 grams. So we'll go ahead and write that down. Because it's going to be part of one of our conversion factors. And then we have our solution map. So um, once again, we have to go through the gatekeeper. So we're gonna go from grams to moles to molecules. So 
we're going to use our gatekeeper to find our answer in molecules. So we have our conversion factor here. One mole of CO2 is equivalent to 44.01 grams of CO2. And then we know that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2 are equal to one mole of CO2, right? So then we'll just plug in the rest of our information, just 22.5 grams CO2. We're going to cancel out our like units, so grams and grams, moles and moles. That way our answer we know is in molecules. of CO2. Always put your units and your element in your answer, otherwise your professor may count it wrong because it would be an incomplete answer. So once we do the math here, we come up with 3.08 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at is converting between grams of a compound and grams of a constituent element. When I say constituent element, I mean like this particular compound, carbon dioxide. Okay, so we're going to be given a number of grams of carbon dioxide and we're going to be asked to find uh, grams of oxygen, for example, right? So we'll have to show, we'll have to know the steps in order to break this down and find the number of grams in that particular element. That's what I'm going to show you how to do now. Okay, so we are going to be converting between grams of a compound and grams of a constituent element. So for this particular example or worked problem, we have um, been asked to find the mass of sodium in a sample, a 15 gram sample of sodium chloride, okay? And so um, what we need to do is we need to determine the best way to go about that. And that's where our solution maps come in handy, okay? So in order to determine the mass of sodium in this compound, the sodium chloride compound, we have to do some calculations, right? So we're going to have to go from grams of sodium chloride. So we're going to start there, grams of sodium chloride. And we're going to have to convert that to moles of sodium chloride. And then we're going to go from moles of sodium chloride to moles of sodium. And then we're going to go from moles of sodium to grams of sodium. Right? So it doesn't seem that hard in the scheme of things, but when you have a problem or an equation that's multi-step like this, it's very easy to get lost in translation. So that's why I suggest the use of the solution maps because the solution maps give you a path, the path that you need to take to get to the answer that you're looking for, right? So it all makes sense in the grand scheme of things, but how do I get from here to here, okay? I've got to figure out what my conversion factors are. And um, the first thing that I need to do is I need to find out what the molar mass is for my sodium chloride because that's going to be one of my conversion factors. 
So, um, and then I can use that to determine what the molar mass is of my sodium so that I can use that as a conversion factor as well. So once again, we grab the periodic table and just off to the side here, I'm going to calculate the molar mass. So I have one gram of sodium and the, so that's one times 22.99. We're going to add that to the one gram of chloride, which is 3545. Right, so when I add these two together, it's going to give me a molar mass of 58.44 grams. So that's going to be my molar mass of sodium chloride. So that's going to be my first conversion factor. So for every one mole of sodium chloride is equal to 58.44 grams of sodium chloride. Okay. And I know that for every one mole of sodium chloride, I have one mole of sodium. And then for every one mole of sodium is equal to 22.99 grams of sodium. So my conversion factors right here. 22.99 to one mole of sodium. One mole to one mole, and one mole of sodium chloride to 58.44 grams of sodium chloride. So once I put, plug in my information, I'll be able to calculate how many grams of sodium are in 15 grams of sodium chloride. So with this multiple step, with this multiple step conversion problem, definitely take your time putting it into your calculator. One step at a time. There's no need to get into a rush. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is cancel out your like units. That way you know that your answer is going to be in the correct number of units, which in this case grams of sodium. So we're just going to write that down right here. Grams of sodium. That's our ultimate, the, the finished answer that we, we are looking for. So when we put this into our calculator, I'll just break it down for you. You're going to put 15 divided by 58.44 times 22.99. That's the easiest way to do it, unless you just want to put in all the ones. Um, it just adds extra keystrokes. So when you put it in like this, the answer that you come out with is 5.9 grams of sodium. So the general formula when you're asked to go from the mass of a compound to the mass of a constituent element is right here and this is not something that you have to, to write down or put to memory because the more that you work these problems you're going to be applying this concept so you won't need to refer back to it on a flashcard or whatever because you're going to learn it it's just going to be another step for you but just like our solution map this is our general formula when we are asked to go from mass the mass of a compound to the mass of a a constituent or individual element. So we're going to go mass of the compound to moles of the compound, moles of the element to mass of the element. So if you keep that in mind 
and you apply that when you're working these types of problems, then you won't have any then you won't have any difficulty at all. All right, so the very next thing that we're going to look at is going to be a mass percent composition of compounds. Let's take a look at what the actual definition is of mass percent. Okay guys, so for mass percent composition, so it's actually mass percent composition of compounds. And it is defined as the elements percentage of the total mass of the compound. So with mass percent composition, you can find how much of one element composes the entire compound. So it's pretty cool. So you take the mass of your element and you divide it by the mass of the entire compound and multiply it by 100% and that gives you the actual weight of that element in that compound. So as an example, we have um, chromium. So we have a sample of chromium that reacts with a metal oxide, right? And I want to know what the mass is of this chromium in the metal oxide. So how much chromium actually makes up this compound, this metal oxide compound. So what I do is I take the 0, 0358 grams of chromium and I'm going to divide it by the mass of my compound which is 0 0.523 grams and I'm just going to say metal oxide, okay? And then I'm going to multiply that by 100% and it's going to give me the mass of my chromium or what the mass of my chromium is. So in this particular example, when we do the math, 68.5% is chromium, right? So that's the mass of our chromium, 68.5%. So we can do another couple of examples here. Um, you do have some of these on your homework page, uh, depending on who your professor is. Um, but there are several of these mass percent compositions that will be on your exams. So this is a good time to learn how to do this. So if you need to pause the video and rewind it and watch how to do this, I know the video is already pretty long, um, but we've covered a lot of information in chapter six and we still have more to cover. So, um, so pause the video, take a break, work some of these problems, and then come back to see what else we have in store for you. Okay, so for this particular example, we are being asked to find the mass of sodium chloride in this sample. And so what it is, is that we have a, okay, the FDA recommends that adults consume less than 2.4 grams of sodium per day. How many grams of sodium chloride can you consume and still be within the FDA guidelines? Okay, so this would be interesting to know. Sodium chloride is 39% sodium by mass, okay? So we're already given the mass percent of sodium in the sodium chloride. And what we need to do is we need to find out how many grams of sodium chloride that makes, okay? So we have to set up our problem with our solution map, just like we always do. So we need to go from grams of sodium to grams of sodium chloride, right? And we're going to use our conversion factor. So we're going to use this conversion factor, but we're going to reverse it. So we're going to have our 100 grams sodium chloride over our 39 grams of sodium. And the reason we do this is because we're starting off with this number here, 2.4 grams of sodium. So if we want our like units to cancel out, then our, our like unit needs to be in our numerator, not in our denominator. <clears throat> 2.4 grams of sodium. And then we're going to multiply, okay? 
So we cancel out our like units, and that way our answer is in sodium chloride. So when we do the math, we get an answer of 6.2 grams sodium chloride. This is our answer. So remember, when you're working through these, these problems, when you're given a mass percent, your mass percent is always based on 100 grams or 100 percent. So 39 percent of 100, right? And when you convert that from percentage into whole number form, that's going to be 39 over 100, okay? So just a quick tip on that. Um, there are, like I said previously, there are some of these practice problems on your homework pages. There's also some in your textbook. If you're using a textbook, then you can work problems 75, 76, 77, and 78 for more practice on these types of mass percent composition problems. So the more you do, the better you're going to get and the more natural it's going to feel as you're working through the homework and especially when it comes to exams because a lot of times when your professors stand in front of a whiteboard and they work a problem out and I know I've said this before when they stand in front of a whiteboard and they work out a problem that they've included in their lecture notes or their PowerPoints it's because they want you to learn that concept because you're gonna see it again okay you're gonna see it again on quizzes you're gonna see it again on unit exams and you'll see it again on finals I can almost guarantee it 100%. So um, let's move on to our next concept, which is going to be empirical formulas. So we, talk, we have talked about empirical formulas um, previously. An empirical formula is like a skeleton formula. So it, li it lists the, the smallest number of molecules of an element in a compound. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that a little bit more in detail um, because you will be expected know, to know that for this unit. Okay, so we need to be able to calculate an empirical formula for a compound based on the number of moles given. Okay, so just keep in mind that a chemical formula represents a ratio of atoms or moles of atoms, not a ratio of masses. And an empirical formula gives the smallest whole number ratio of each type of atom in a chemical compound. It's not the specific number of each type of atom in a molecule, okay? So what we want to do is we want to convert moles. Um, so we're given moles of an element or moles of a compound, and we want to convert that to um, mass. Right, so we want to find the moles of hydrogen and the moles of oxygen based on these weights here. So we have three grams of hydrogen and 24 grams of oxygen. And so what we need to do is we need to um, calculate this based on the molar mass of each compound, right? So we use a conversion factor our answer is going to be in moles. So our moles conversion goes on the top. On the bottom, we put the molar mass of hydrogen, which in this case is 1.01 mole uh, grams of hydrogen. Okay. So essentially, you are you are dividing one into three. So it's going to give you an answer of three, right? So that's three moles of hydrogen, okay? And then on your oxygen, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna convert from your grams to your moles using your molar mass. So we have one mole of oxygen. We're gonna divide that by the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.0 grams of oxygen, right? And that's going to give you 1.5 moles. 
of oxygen. So our chemical formula, or our empirical formula, looks like this. So it's going to be H3 O 1.5, okay? And so in, because you have a fraction here, the 1.5, what you're going to do is you're going to divide, in order to get a whole number subscript, you're going to divide each subscript by the smallest number. So in this case, you're going to divide by 1.5 and 1.5. And that's going to give you H two O. So this is our empirical formula. Okay guys, so we're gonna take this information here that I put on the board and we're gonna work another sample program problem. So we're given 24.5 grams of nitrogen and 70 grams of oxygen. And we are asked to calculate the empirical formula of the compound. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert these grams to moles. So for nitrogen, we're going to go ahead and set up our problem, 24.5 grams nitrogen. We want to convert that into one mole of nitrogen. So we're going to divide it by the molecular weight, which is 1401 grams of nitrogen, and that's going to give us 1.75 moles of nitrogen. And then we're going to take our 70 grams of oxygen. Convert that into moles as our unit, divide that by 16 grams of oxygen. And that's going to give us 4.38 moles of oxygen, okay? So then we put our, when we put our compound together with our moles, it's going to be in with a subscript of 1.75 O with a subscript of 4.38. Well, we want whole number, we want whole number subscripts, right? So um, we're going to divide by the 1.75 to get our answer, okay? So our answer here is going to be. We still don't have a whole number subscript, okay? So if we've got subscripts that are not whole numbers, what we want to do is we want to multiply all the subscripts by a small whole number to arrive at whole number subscripts, right? So in this case, we can multiply this 2.5 by 2 to get a whole number subscript, okay? So we're just going to multiply by 2. And that's going to give us N205. So this is our empirical formula. So your professor has probably listed um, a chart for you in the PowerPoint notes. You might want to go look for it. And it'll have your fractional subscripts and the whole number to multiply it by in order to get a whole number subscript. So that's definitely noteworthy, uh, flashcard worthy, and uh, there should also be something in your text, maybe a table in your text that has the same information. Let's see if I can't find that for you. So that should be on, if you're using the sixth edition Intro Chem book, it's on page 188. In the example problem, it's at the bottom of the page. So that's definitely noteworthy. You need to write that down so that you'll have it handy as you're working through your homework problems and preparing for quizzes and exams because you definitely have to know that. Okay guys, well I appreciate you watching my video today. That's gonna to be it for this video. 
Um, look for my next video, which is going to be covering Chapter 7, Chemical Reactions. And this is where we get into the fun stuff. We talk about different types of chemical reactions, um, gas evolution, combustion, precipitation, and the generic formulas that go with those, and how to calculate those and how to balance those equations. So it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of information is going to be covered. So look for that to be, you know, a... a information packed video but it will be beneficial um, if you just you know if you take the time and review the information that I'm sharing with you um, I know that it will help you out on future exams and quizzes so as always thanks again for watching stay safe stay healthy see you next time